Hi everyone, this is Jim. Welcome to episode 4 of Opening Basics. Today we're going to look at the uh, Scheveningen and the classical lines in the Sicilian. So let's uh, put that on the board. These two lines uh, come from the same starting position as the uh, dragon and the Nidorf. So we get e4, c5, knight f3, d6, the main line. We're going to look at alternatives in later videos, but we're going to continue with the main line up till move 5 here. So d4, uh, attacking the center, the exchange occurs, getting an open Sicilian, now knight f6 attacking the uh, e-pawn and knight c3 defending it. And so this is the position where we can branch off into the knight orf with a6 or the dragon with g6 which I looked at in the previous videos. Um, the two lines we're going to look at now are um, knight to c6 in this video or e6. So knight c6 is known as the classical variation and e6 is known as the Skeveningen. So let's take a look at the Skeveningen first. Um, <clears throat> this opening was played at a chess tournament in the Netherlands and at the town of uh, Scheveningen, which I guess is pronounced actually uh, Scheveningen, according to uh, Chess Explained. But I'm going to stick with uh, something a little easier to pronounce. Um, this was quite popular, uh, quite a popular way to play the Sicilian, um, but it has a few drawbacks. So um, one is this uh, pawn blocks the uh, bishop so that <clears throat> this g4 square is, is unguarded and white can play g4 immediately. That's known as the Keras attack. We'll get to that. Um, the other drawback to e6 is that it leaves the pawn on d6 a bit weak and that can come under fire. But it also, um, well, it sets up a very solid center for black where um, black controls a lot of squares and it takes a while for white to break through that. So um, except for the Keras attack, it's, it's quite a solid way to play. So let's um, look at another line first. Um, if uh, white doesn't go with the Keras attack, but uh, plays a normal move like bishop e2, uh, just preparing to castle uh, kingside and push on with f4 and, and get an attack on the uh, center, <clears throat> or perhaps on the kingside. A normal reply here would be a6, and then after castling, bishop e7 developing, and then f4. <clears throat> so the a6 move uh, keeps a piece from coming to the b5 square and putting more pressure on the d6 pawn. So it's a way of indirectly protecting d6. And then bishop b7 is just developing. This move f4 has opened up this diagonal towards the king. And actually this is a position I wanted to talk about. Black can play the move queen b6 here. And this is often an idea in the Sicilians for black to play this move, taking advantage uh, particularly when this diagonal is open, creating a pin on this knight and uh, also putting pressure on the beat pawn. But in this particular case, it's not a good move. And in fact, here, let's erase these arrows. Right here, the normal moves are either castles or queen c7. That's also a good square for the queen. So let's uh, take a look at the issue with queen b6, because I think this is kind of instructive. Um, white at this position can go ahead and just play bishop to e3. So setting up a kind of a veiled threat on the queen. Notice the bishop is loose here, so the knight is somewhat pinned, but the knight can always go to a square like f5 here, defending the bishop and threatening to take on g7 with check. But also this bishop, so it's, it's protected things and there are some potential threats here. But uh, it did leave the, the b-pawn undefended. The question is, can uh, black get away with uh, taking the b-pawn? And uh, the answer is no, that's not a good move. And uh, the reply here to take advantage of it is knight to a4. <clears throat> so this is the, the thing I wanted to show you. Knight a4 not only attacks the queen, but it, it also hits the retreat square of the queen. So the queen can't just uh, go back where it came from. And um, so there aren't many good squares for the queen. If the queen goes to um, b4, which at first looks like it might be safe, it's attacking the knight and maybe buying some time to... Uh, retreat along this this uh, diagonal after um, d5, for example, queen d6 perhaps could be played. <clears throat> but uh, white has a move here, c3. It uh, defends the knight and uh, defends uh, this knight and attacks the queen. And also it's defended, the pawn is defended by the knight, so the queen has to move again. And now the queen is in big trouble. If it comes, if it moves to uh, a3, then bishop to c1 is a trap. The queen has no squares at all, and you lose the queen. Uh, but if the queen goes to a5, the queen also gets trapped in that square. So this is um, 
<clears throat> if you want to take a moment and pause the video and see if you can find the tactic here that traps the queen. Okay, I'm going to give the answer away. Basically, any knight move with tempo, so knight takes e6 is a good way to play it. Um, um, bishop takes or knight takes, pawn takes knight, either way. And then bishop to b6. And it's hitting the queen, the, the knight's defended, this pawn's defended. Um, and if you look at this entire row, the two pawns, the pawns on e4 and f4, cover four squares. The bishop is covering that square. The knight's covering that square, and the bishop is covering that square. So the queen has no square to go to, and it's just trapped. <clears throat> so it's pretty amazing. And uh, something to watch out for when you play this uh, pawn grab is black. Sometimes the pawn grab is good, but particularly when these, these uh, pawns are up here uh, setting up a trap for the queen, uh, you're in trouble. So if we go forward a bit, after taking the pawn knight to a4, the only way to keep playing is to play uh, queen a3. And while this doesn't lose immediately, um, in fact, it looks good at first, right? It's attacking the the uh, knight and it's attacking the bishop, which is also loose here on e3. But the move c3 once again solves everything. Defends the uh, knight, blocks the uh, queen from attacking the bishop, and it also threatens bishop to c1, once again trapping the queen. So the only way out of this is for uh, <coughs> black to play b5 uh, so that the queen actually can take on a4 as a way of escaping. And now it's white's turn, though, when white has this move knight to b6, which is a fork between the rook and the undefended bishop. So this is all uh, winning for, well, it's not completely winning, but it's uh, probably a winning advantage for uh, white with good play. So it's just not good for black to take the pawn. So backing up after f4, um, normal moves like castle or queen c7 could be played, and the game goes on from there. So let's back up um, in this position after e6, the Skeveningen. Um, we just looked at bishop e2. It's also possible to play bishop e3 immediately. And uh, with the bishop on e3, notice that the uh, knight can't come to g4 to harass the bishop, once again, because uh, that square is not defended and the queen can just take it. So the bishop is safe on e3, and then uh, white can choose to go into um, English attack, a setup similar to the English attack with the pawn on f3, queen on d2, and castle queen side. Um, or there are other lines he can play there too, but that's uh, another reasonable way to play with sort of typical Sicilian <coughs> ideas. The one move that's uh, unique to the Skeveningen is the Keras attack, and let's look at that now. And this is probably the critical line. If you can uh, survive against the Keras attack, then, then this is a playable opening. So g4 is... Uh, setting up a threat to just uh, chase this knight away and maybe going after some of these weakened pawns here. Um, <clears throat> and the best move for black, it appears, is uh, h6, just slowing down the advance of the pawn. And now if um, white pushes on, this uh, can be played, it's a line, but it's not particularly scary. So we get this exchange and um, there's a pin on the knight, but the pin can be blocked with the bishop to e7. Um, or uh, black can even ignore it for a move and just continue developing with knight c6. And uh, that's probably the best play here. And this is a position, I mean, it looks a little funny with the missing uh, h pawn. <clears throat> but in fact, uh, black is quite solid here and, and there's no big advantage to white. So white typically uh, will not push on with g5 immediately, but will try to build up a, a stronger attack by uh, playing h4 here and uh, preparing g5 and maybe keeping a pawn here on g5 permanently. But uh, black can continue developing at knight c6. And now, once again, um, g5, it's, it's a bit premature because uh, if you take, <clears throat> um, white can't take with a pawn and get a strong pawn presence there because of the pin on the file. So he has to take back with the bishop. And similar to the... Uh, previous line, this is this is okay for black. He can just continue, for example, with the bishop e7. And he's got a, a solid enough position here, just a slight edge to white. So nothing nothing to be afraid of there. So white, once again, he doesn't push on the g5 immediately, but keeps building up with rook to g1. And now uh, we come to an interesting point. There's uh, two possible defenses here. The usual way of playing is h5, and this is a bit risky because um, the move g5 is now uh, 
dangerous. It, it uh, <clears throat> forces this knight to move. And um, the knight goes away to d7. You know, black has, uh, I mean, white. White has just a tremendous space advantage and uh, easy development. So he's in good shape. So black tries to stir up some trouble by playing knight, <laughs> knight to g4. So this is a very funny looking uh, line. And uh, it goes on from here. But the, the point is that, that uh, black has got to be uh, careful this this uh, knight potentially is trapped but uh, also as long as that knight is there there's also there's potential threats against uh, white for example a queen b6 uh, would threaten checkmate on the uh, f2 square if this knight weren't in the way so bishop e2 uh, queen b6 <coughs> is an interesting way to play because uh, of the pressure on the knight here the knight is immediately threatened uh, and now bishop e3 defending, similar to what we saw before. But in this position, uh, actually, it's it's safe to take the pawn on b2. It may look a bit crazy, but that's a playable move here. So uh, anyway, this is a very tricky line, is all I wanted to say about that. And uh, there's also another way white can play. Maybe it's a little more common, but uh, if uh, white takes here, black can uh, take back. And bishop to g5. And... Um, F6 is probably not good. The bishop can just drop back here and, uh, <clears throat> you know, white's development, black. Black's development is a bit awkward with these pawns here blocking the retreat square of the knight. And uh, he's got a lot of pieces on the back row still. And uh, white's got easy development. He's going to just lift his queen up to d2 or e2 and castle queenside. He's in good shape. So that's an excellent position for white. Um, black, the best move here is just to drop the knight back. And uh, similar to what I said along the other lines, um, I think white has maybe a little bit more of a lead in development here. So, so white has, a, um, you know, maybe a slightly bigger than normal opening advantage, but not overwhelming. So that, that's a way to play as well. But those are very uh, tricky. Well, there's, there's, you know, and it also depends on white. So if you're looking at this from black's point of view, this h5 leads to some tricky lines, even though it is the main move. Um, but there's another move here. Uh, it's in the opening book, and it's also as a second choice in the opening book, but it's suggested by the chess engine as the recommended way to play, which is uh, you leave these pawns hanging for a bit and counterattack in the center with uh, d5 uh, here, opening up a line for your bishop and uh, threatening, actually, to take on e4. That's just a loose pawn there. and <clears throat> White has to react. Uh, the best move is probably taking... And we could get a situation like this, knight takes, knight takes, pawn takes, where um, black has an isolated queen's pawn, but uh, his position is a lot more open. He's got uh, room for his bishops uh, to come out, so he's not going to suffer the kind of uh, space disadvantage that he has in the other lines. And uh, white has fairly comfortable development here, so probably bishop e3 lifting the queen and castling queenside, and the game can continue from here. But... Uh, even though these uh, pawns look a bit menacing, as long as the center is open and black's pieces are in a position to um, traverse uh, the board from side to side, um, then his pieces can come over and defend against the attack. So uh, he should be okay here. In fact, the, uh, the engine is suggesting he can even get away with the uh, queen takes h4 grabbing the pawn. <laughs> He'll probably have to give a pawn back at some point. That's, that's a bit of a uh, risky decision. But uh, anyway... <clears throat> uh, this is this is a way that can be played as black, and I think if you want to play the skivening, and this is probably the way to go if uh, if someone from the white side tries to launch the Kara's attack against you. So that's that's enough for the skivening. And um, this particular pawn formation, if I didn't mention it before, the d6 and e6. This is called the skivening and setup, and it can occur in um, in other openings too. For example, in knight or if you play e6 instead of e e5. Um, that's called the skevening and setup, but uh, it's e6 right here at move 5 is, is the skevening and opening proper, or the skevening and variation. Okay, the other variation I wanted to look at in this video is the classical variation, which is knight c6 right here. So here, let's uh, briefly refresh our memory by going through the main line again. e4, c5, knight f3, d6, d4, takes, takes. Knight f6, knight c3 defending. Okay, and here we are in that position. So knight 
C6 is a classical variation. It's one move we hadn't looked at that's uh, one of the major moves at this position. In a way, this is kind of a waiting move. Uh, black is waiting to see which way uh, white is going to set up. So, for example, if white chooses to set up um, an English attack, starting with the move f3, or, um, well, bishop e3 is probably not so great because knight g4 was possible there. Um, but if he starts with f3 with the idea of playing bishop e3, queen d2, um, black can immediately grab some space in the center with um, e5, push this knight back, and get a decent position. So um, the more, well, let's see. Similarly, there's this um, bishop e2 move. If, um, if white is just going to play in a more uh, traditional fashion, a more uh, <clears throat> positional way, um, with the idea of castling uh, kingside and maybe uh, playing f4 later, um, then it's possible to play either um, e6 or e5 here. e6 going into a type of Skeveningen where um, g4 has not yet been played. Or uh, even e5 can be played again here, just uh, clamping down on the idea of f4 and uh, slowing, slowing white's uh, advances down. So both of those are reasonable ways to play. So the most um, aggressive continuations for white are the bishop moves, bishop c4, and bishop g5. Let's take a look at uh, bishop c4 first. Um, the idea with this move is to uh, just get some pressure on the king side and also stop the uh, move d5, try and keep the advantage of space that white has in the center. And uh, the usual reply from black is uh, e6. So trying to shut down the bishop along this diagonal, and if the moment is right, uh, preparing to move d5 at a later time. Um, the play can continue with uh, bishop e3, and uh, bishop e7 just developing. Queen e2. Notice the queen can go to e2, well, should go to e2 in this uh, position, because uh, white wants to keep an eye on the g4 square and not let the knight come in here to g4 and attack the uh, uh, bishop. So now white's prepared to castle on either side, but most likely queen side. And here, black can castle or play a6. And uh, play continues a typical Sicilian fashion. So the most uh, challenging response uh, against the classical is, and also the most popular response, is the move bishop g5. <clears throat> so this immediately uh, puts a little bit of pressure on black's position. The threat is to just uh, take that knight and mess up the pawns. And the usual reply is e6, so that... Uh, Black can take back with the queen if bishop takes. Now, queen d2 is played to allow uh, queenside castling and uh, with the idea of increasing pressure on the, uh, the d-pawn. And now there's two ways to play in this position. Um, if you just play a6, this is probably the most popular move, the idea is to uh, keep the knight from coming to b5 and, and that way controlling how much pressure gets applied to the uh, d6 square. So white would uh, castle queenside, and now bishop to d7. Notice the bishop here back on f8 continues to support this pawn, so even if this knight moves out of the way to b3 or f3, um, this pawn is defended. Um, and then uh, white can continue the attack with f4 or f3. That's a reasonable way to play. Um, I did want to warn you about one thing. If you play bishop e7 here, kind of a natural move, it can get you into trouble. And uh, yeah, already it's a problem. Bishop takes, you need to take back with the pawn because if you take back with the bishop, then already uh, white can win a pawn here with knight takes, pawn takes, and queen takes. So this uh, exchange at f6 drew the bishop away from protecting the d6 square, and then the queen can come in and grab a pawn. And this is a good pawn grab here because it leaves black with uh, isolated pawns, and uh, as well as white being a pawn up. So in this position, after bishop takes f6, it's actually better to take back with the pawn. And that's, I mean, it's not a horrible position, actually. This is uh, the kind of situation that sometimes arises in the classical Sicilian, where you're, you're just forced to uh, take with a pawn in order to hold on to your center. And... Uh, well, you're not likely to castle kingside anytime soon because the weakness is over here. But on the other hand, you've got a very solid uh, setup here in the center, and so you're not going to come under immediate attack. And so, in fact, this is a playable position for black. It's just a little bit uh, awkward, <laughs> a little bit ugly looking. But uh, you, can, you can play that way. 
anyway, but uh, bishop d7 is not, bishop e7 is not the main move there for that reason, and that's why they play bishop d7 here. So the queen can take back, and the bishop can stay here defending the d6 pawn. Okay, and then there's one last line to show you in this position after, um, here, let's back up to the start of the classical. So that was knight c6 in this position, and now um, the most uh, direct response and the most common response is uh, bishop g5, and black plays e6 so that the queen can take back the knight, and now queen d2, defending the bishop and allowing queenside castling. So uh, we just looked at the response a6 here with the idea of keeping a knight out of um, uh, b5, but uh, it turns out that black can also allow that by playing bishop e7, and this line goes um, castle queenside, castle kingside, and now uh, it looks like black might be winning something here by playing knight to uh, knight to b5 with uh, three pieces all of a sudden ganging up on the uh, weakened d6 pawn. But uh, black has an interesting and tactical reply here with uh, queen b6. Uh, queen a5 is also possible, but the idea is just to, to vacate the uh, d8 square so a rook can come over. So now grabbing the pawn immediately is not good because of that pin. Um, white can continue with the idea of trying to win a pawn by taking, taking the knight, but black uh, just takes back. And then uh, if white grabs the pawn, have kind of a tricky continuation. So the rook here um, <clears throat> pins the knight, and uh, there may be a threat to actually even uh, win the knight. So uh, white tries to prepare the move uh, e4, e5 rather, by playing f4. And now um, black in this position can throw in the move bishop takes uh, c, <clears throat> bishop takes c3 there, yeah, a little bit of a, a tricky position. And, uh, well, the queen has to take. No, I'm sorry, the queen can't take. The queen can't take because of this move, knight to uh, b4, which attacks the uh, h2 square, threatens a fork of those two pieces. Attacks a2 and threatens a fork of those two pieces, but also at the same time attacks the knight. So queen d2 defending and uh, knight there check. And uh, the line goes on, but uh, black is pretty good in this line. It's a bit tricky, <laughs> but uh, anyway... Uh, it's not so great to grab that pawn, is the point. So in this position, um, even though it looks like, uh, you know, black hasn't bothered to defend the uh, b4, b5 b square and is allowing this knight b5 trick, uh, he has ways of defending against it. So the, the, typical move from, uh, <clears throat> the typical move from white in this position is just to ignore all of that and continue his attack with uh, f4. And... Uh, or knight b3, and in this position after uh, knight takes, queen takes, now the queen can come out. And uh, this is a position that's uh, got chances for both sides. Uh, white's going to play bishop c4, <coughs> trying to get another piece into the attack and add another defender to the uh, a2 square. And the game goes on with chances for both sides, but that's this is a, a decent way to play um, for both sides. So. That wraps it up, uh, my coverage. I think uh, next time I'm going to look at uh, some of those byways leading up to uh, the positions we've been studying, so uh, openings like the uh, Kalashnikov and the Sveshnikov. So stay tuned for that. That'll be in Episode 5, and uh, see you then. Bye.